This video is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at the link in the description below. Travis Scott is one of the most influential artists of the last five years. The strength of Travis's creative vision has been unrivaled since the beginning of his career as a protege of Kanye West in the early 2010s. In this video, I'm going to be ranking the two mixtapes and four albums in Travis's catalog from worst to best. Okay, so I hope no one's too surprised over my last place pick. Quavo and Travis are longtime collaborators, and the Migos rapper has been present on every single one of Travis's projects since his 2014 mixtape Days Before Rodeo. Some of Travis's most popular songs feature Quavo, such as Oh My Dis Side from Rodeo and Pick Up the Phone from Birds. Somehow, despite this history of hits, Huncho Jack falls flat on its face. The energy on Huncho Jack is so lopsided that the album basically ends up sounding like one long, boring song. Huncho Jack feels like it was designed more by Travis and Quavo's labels than the rappers themselves. It employs almost every low-grade cliché present in hip-hop today, and with the least energy possible at that. This album is saved from being unlistenable only by a couple of cool samples, the occasional catchy hook, and hard-hitting bass throughout. Huncho Jack, 6th place. For 5th, I'm gonna have to choose Owl Pharaoh. Now, don't get me wrong, this mixtape definitely has some bangers, and it aged way better than a lot of what was being put out in 2013. Its main problem lies in the fact that Travis just hadn't yet decided who he wanted to be. His personality and recognizable style is what makes his music so good, and it just hadn't fully developed yet on Owl Pharaoh. Travis was still using the amateurish dollar sign in his name, and the songs on this mixtape are all over the place. There's EDM, party rap, dance hall, and none of it really makes all that much sense put together. That being said, Owl Pharaoh is an incredibly forceful and ambitious first mixtape that left few people in doubt that Travis was capable of making music. Travis was able to pull together all of the trends of the day and turn them into something dark, twisted, and deeply atmospheric. It's worth a couple of listens at the least. Owl Pharaoh, fifth place. And so this is where things get a little difficult. Birds in the Trap Sing McKnight has a bad reputation. The album was delayed multiple times, and a lot of fans saw it as filler, while Travis put off the release of the rumored rodeo sequel, Astroworld. Travis himself went on record saying that 2018's Astroworld was supposed to be a second album, and Birds was a throwaway. And it totally shows. Birds just didn't have enough effort or energy put into it. The beautiful, dark, twisted sort of aesthetic that Travis was going for, it's kind of there, but it's just not well fleshed out. You can tell the album just didn't have enough time put into it. Moments like the opening and the haunting SDP interlude shine a bit of light on what Birds could have been, but it lacks the energy that Travis is capable of, both in production and vocals, making the rest of this record empty and unoriginal. The only reason I'm ranking this above Owl Pharaoh is because it's way more consistent, it's mixed better, and it's much more mature sounding. Birds in the Trap, Sing McKnight, 4th place. So now we're in the top 3, and the first installment of the Rodeo trilogy is going to take 3rd place. Days Before Rodeo is Travis's second mixtape, and it came out in 2014. DBR improved on 2013's Owl Pharaoh in every way. Travis's energy on here is unprecedented. The mixtape is brooding, dark, and sinister. Songs like Drugs You Should Try It, Basement Freestyle, and Mama Sita are among the best Travis has ever recorded. This mixtape marked the first time people really paid attention to Travis Scott as a potential future superstar. DBR is rough, it wasn't mixed well, and it suffers from a bit of thematic inconsistency, but that's part of what makes mixtapes so interesting. What matters is that it's overflowing with a raw energy that would eventually propel Travis to the top of the rap game. Days Before Rodeo, third place. I'd say that Astroworld lived up to the hype, at least as well as we could ask it to. Because on the one hand, it's impossible to live up to hype completely. That's the nature of hype. When you wait for something for two years, there's always going to be a metaphorical Nav's verse on Yosemite. But there's just something about Astroworld that's on another level. For years, Travis was little more than a master of imitation, drawing from the sonic footprints of his mentors Kanye West and Kid Cudi. Astroworld finally escapes their immense gravitational pull with collaboration from legends like Drake, Frank Ocean, Stevie Wonder, and more. In a first for Travis, this record feels like one cohesive work of art. 
It's not filling quotas for bangers and pop songs, and that makes all the difference for Travis Scott. Astroworld is big, it's comprehensive, and it sounds amazing. I'm not gonna stop listening to it anytime soon. Astroworld, second place. Rodeo is the definitive trap album. The production is insane, the features are next level, and Travis has never put more effort into his performances before or after. Everything Travis dropped before Rodeo was leading up to it, quite literally with days before Rodeo. Everything after it has been looked at as a pale imitation. There are no bad songs on this album. It paces itself, and there's not a single moment on here that I can call boring. Rodeo is hypnotic, dark, and deeply nihilistic. It's a true hip-hop opera, and those just don't come around very often. Without a doubt, Rodeo is one of the best hip-hop albums to come out this decade and definitely the best trap album ever made. I'll probably do an entire video just on Rodeo at some point, so I'm going to end it at this. Who else could put Young Thug and Justin Bieber on a song together and make it a hit? This has been my ranking of Travis Scott's albums from worst to best. If you enjoyed it, drop a like on the video. Hit me up on Twitter and Instagram too. Thanks for watching. If you're interested more in the history of music, then Audible has exactly what you need. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, comedy, and lectures for just about everyone. Go to audible.com slash Volksgeist or text Volksgeist to 500-500 to get started exploring the unmatched amount of knowledge that their service can provide. Listening to audiobooks motivates us, brings us closer together, and improves our outlook on the world. I strongly encourage my viewers to give it a shot. My personal recommendation for the first book you should listen to is Homo Deus, an engaging and casual yet in-depth look at humanity's near future and what it might hold given our total conquest of natural threats like famine, disease, and war. If you're interested at all in futurism, the natural world, history, and politics, this is a great book for you. It sets you up to be an informed citizen for the 21st century. Once again, go to audible.com slash Volksgeist or text Volksgeist to 500-500 to get your first audiobook for free, as well as a 30-day free trial. If you want to learn more about everything from history to hip-hop, or just hear a good story, get started with Audible today.